The Critline monitor is designed to mount on the IV pole on the 2008 hemodialysis machines. To attach the Critline monitor to the 2008 series IV pole, remove four screws from pole mount bracket using the hex wrench included in the Critline monitor box. Secure pole mount bracket to the wider top portion of the IV pole by replacing the four screws with the hex wrench. The pole mount should rest comfortably on top of the IV pole holder attached to the machine. It's helpful to keep the screw in the bottom of the IV pole loosened to allow the pole to move freely while installing the pole mount and monitor. Tighten the screw once the monitor and dialyzer holder are aligned properly. Never place the Critline monitor on top of the hemodialysis machine. The IV pole mount bracket can be utilized on a freestanding IV pole. Simply follow the instructions as noted. Insert large black capped screw up from the bottom of the pole mount. Position the Critline monitor on top of the screw so it lines up in the circle area on top. Tighten the large black screw by turning from below until the monitor is secure. Connect the universal power supply cords together and attach to the back of the monitor. Turn power button on. The green charging indicator light on the bottom of the button pad should illuminate. The Critline monitor uses a sensor clip which is placed on the blood chamber that is attached to the hemodialyzer. Proper alignment of the blood chamber and placement of the sensor clip is essential to obtain accurate readings. During setup of the extracorporeal circuit, attach the Critline blood chamber to the dialyzer. Simply remove cap from arterial header of dialyzer and the red cap from the blood chamber. Attach the blood chamber by twisting the wing closest to the header until the connection is tight without using excessive force. Then attach the arterial blood line. When you turn the Critline monitor on, you will see the main menu unless there is still data in the memory. From the main menu, you will scroll to either patient run to begin a patient treatment or calibration to verify the accuracy of the Critline monitor. The Critline monitor is a menu-driven system. To move the cursor, simply press either the up arrow or the down arrow. When the cursor is at the option you want to choose, press the select button. If you turn the Critline monitor on and there is still data in the memory, you will see the memory full screen where you will be prompted to either clear the memory or select output options. Once you choose memory clear, you will be asked to press the select button to confirm that you want to clear the memory. The memory should be cleared before starting a treatment. To verify the accuracy of the Critline monitor, you can scroll to Calibration from the main menu and press the Select button. If more than 30 days have passed since the last time you performed a Verify Accuracy test, you will see the Calibration menu when you turn the Critline monitor on instead of the main menu. Make sure that the sensor clip is placed on the verification filter on the side of the Critline monitor. Wait for the Critline monitor to detect the verification filter and to display the filter detected message. Once you see this message, move the cursor to verify accuracy and press the select button. Wait for the two minute countdown process. The elapsed time remaining will display. If the Critline monitor indicates the verify accuracy test failed, you will be asked to confirm proper sensor placement as well as ensure the filter is clean. Once this is done, press the Select button to repeat the Verify Accuracy test. From the main menu, move the cursor to Patient Run and then press the Select button to advance to the initial data screen. The initial data screen allows you to enter specific patient identification information prior to beginning a treatment. You can also verify the date and time in this screen. Make any corrections as necessary. To enter a patient ID, scroll to Patient ID and press the Select button. 
You can then enter up to a four-digit alphanumeric ID number. Scroll to the letter or number you want and then press the Select button. Repeat this process until you have entered four digits. If your patient ID is less than four digits, scroll to Save and press the Select button. To change the date, scroll to Date Adjust and press the Select button. You can then scroll to Month, Day, and Year in order to enter the correct date. To change the time, scroll to Time Adjust and press the Select button. You can then scroll to hours and minutes in order to enter the correct time. Three to five minutes after starting the dialysis treatment and when no air or saline is present, place the sensor clip so that it is perpendicular to the blood chamber. The sensor clip will glow red when the monitor is turned on. Choose Start Run and press the Select button. The Critline monitor will display the startup screen. It will take approximately one minute before any readings are displayed. Once values appear in the hematocrit and SAT fields, the screen will change to the blood volume monitoring profile after approximately 10 seconds. If you know the hematocrit limit of the patient you are monitoring, you can enter it by pressing the up arrow button until the proper number has been entered. When the hematocrit limit is set, the dashed line will appear on the screen. Let's review a sample blood volume profile screen. The vertical lines represent one hour increments. The screen will rescale if the treatment goes longer than four hours. The numbers to the left of the screen represent the percent change in blood volume. Every patient begins at zero percent. Below the graph, you get a reading of the patient's hematocrit, estimated hemoglobin, percent change in blood volume, and oxygen saturation. These values are updated continuously throughout the treatment. In the sample profile shown, the percent change in blood volume is just below 0% after one hour. This is considered a flat slope and indicates that the patient's plasma refill rate is occurring at the same or greater rate than ultrafiltration. This is considered an A profile. Profile A suggests that the ultrafiltration rate may be increased without immediate risk of intradialytic symptoms. In the example here, the profile begins to decrease gradually starting at one hour. A gradual slope has been targeted to find the best compromise between a high ultrafiltration rate and the prevention of intradialytic symptoms. This is considered a B profile. The ideal slope is not a fixed percentage of BV decrease and will vary from patient to patient. In the example, the operator has marked an intervention at 45 minutes into the treatment. To mark an intervention, press the up or down arrow any time during the treatment. The marker can be used to remind you that an intervention was done at that time. In the profile shown at two and a half hours, the blood volume profile begins to get quite steep. This is considered a steep slope or a profile C. A steep slope bears a higher risk of intradialytic symptoms. Anytime the ultrafiltration rate is minimized, you can check to see if refill is present. In this profile, the UF is set to minimum where you see the second arrow at approximately 2 hours and 45 minutes. During the next several minutes, you see the blood volume profile has increased significantly. This means that the patient is continuing to refill into the vascular space and has more fluid to remove. A refill check can be performed by following these steps. Set the UF rate to minimum. Record the hematocrit value as displayed by the Critline monitor. Wait 10 minutes and record the hematocrit as displayed by the Critline monitor.
If the hematocrit has decreased by 0.5 during the 10 minutes, then the patient is considered to have vascular refill. The startup screen can be accessed at any time during the treatment by pressing the menu button one time. The startup screen will appear for 10 seconds before returning to the blood volume screen. This screen is used to enter a hematocrit limit and also to remind you of the patient's beginning hematocrit and hemoglobin. You can also use this screen to see the maximum hematocrit measured during the treatment as well as the lowest oxygen saturation that has been measured during the treatment. If you push the menu button while still in the startup screen, you will get to what is called the split startup screen. From this screen, you can change the default profile screen from percent change in blood volume to hematocrit or oxygen saturation. Just move the cursor until it is next to the default screen of choice and press the select button. Let's quickly review the hematocrit profile screen. This screen is the exact inverse of the blood volume profile screen. As fluid is ultrafiltrated from the patient, the hematocrit will increase proportionately. A dashed line will be displayed on the screen if a hematocrit limit was set. Now, let's review the oxygen saturation profile screen. This screen is helpful when trying to determine at what point in a treatment that a patient's oxygen saturation value dropped below an acceptable level. The normal range for arterial, fistula, or graft oxygen saturation is greater than 90%. The normal range for venous oxygen saturation is between 60 and 80%. If oxygen saturation drops too low, oxygen administration may be considered according to clinic policy. You do not have to be in the oxygen profile screen to know the oxygen saturation of your patient. The oxygen saturation value is also displayed on the blood volume profile screen. In addition to being able to change the default profile screen, the split startup screen allows you to exit treatment by moving the cursor to the setup stop and pressing the select button and you will be directed to the setup menu. Review the information in the setup menu and make any changes if desired. Then, move the cursor to stop and press the select button to end the treatment. Once you select stop on the setup menu, the CritLine monitor will stop gathering data. A treatment session may also be ended by turning the CritLine monitor off. If you select stop from the setup menu, you will be directed back to the main menu where you can then begin a new treatment. If you turn the CritLine monitor off and back on, you will see the memory full screen if you did not erase the memory from a previous treatment. If you want to print or download the data from a previous treatment, move the cursor to Output Options and press the Select button to enter the Output menu. The CritLine monitor stores up to 26 hours of data. The CritLine monitor provides a significant amount of treatment data. A treatment profile will include hematocrit, blood volume change, and oxygen saturation profiles all on one sheet of paper. The header information above the profiles will include the patient's name and ID number if entered into the CritLine monitor prior to treatment. In addition, the header information includes the patient's starting hematocrit, maximum hematocrit, hematocrit limit if entered, starting hemoglobin, station number if entered, date of treatment, along with the start time and end time of the treatment. The header information also includes the serial number and software version of the CritLine monitor, along with original calibration date and last verification date. From the output menu, you can select how you want to print this treatment profile, as well as choose your printer. To choose a printer, move the cursor to Select Printer and press the Select button. There are three ways to get printouts and or data of the treatment profiles. Direct connection to a printer, wireless connection to a printer, and via our reporter software. In order to make a direct connection between printer and the CritLine monitor, you will require a printer with parallel port and a standard 25-pin Decentronics cable. Once the printing cable is connected to both the CritLine monitor and the printer, select Print Parallel 
and a treatment profile will print. Regardless of the printer manufacturer utilized, please select HP LaserJet as the default printer. To select a wireless printing option, you will need the following items. Client radio attached to the top of your Critline monitor, the Y splitter cable to allow for power supply to both devices, the one foot cable that connects from the radio to the serial port of the monitor. You will also need to connect one server radio to a computer located within the clinic. This server radio comes with a DB9 female to female serial cable that connects the serial radio to a 9 pin communications port on the back of the computer. If you do not have a 9 pin serial port on your computer, it is okay to use a USB converter cable. The serial radio also comes with its own power supply. Once the client radios have been connected to the Critline monitor and the server radio has been connected to the computer, you install the printer software to this computer. This software simply cues the data that is sent from the client radio to the server radio and sends this information to the printer where a treatment profile is generated. Once you load the printer software, simply choose the communication port to which the server radio is connected and you are ready to print. Make sure this software is always open when you want to print. This software works in the background, thus allowing you to use your computer for other tasks. Before you print, make sure you see both a green light and a red light on the client radio. This means the client radio and the server radio recognize each other. To print a treatment profile, first make sure the PC printer is chosen as the default printer and then select Print Serial. Once you select Print Serial, the treatment profile is sent wirelessly to the server radio and then the software will send a command to the printer to print the treatment profile. With the wireless printing, you only get a hard copy printout. No data is stored electronically. If you want to gather an electronic version of the treatment profile, we offer a software that is called Reporter Software. The Reporter Software allows for the electronic capture of the treatment and stores this data in your computer. The profiles that are saved can then be printed as well, if desired. To use the Reporter software, you need to first download it onto a computer. Once the Reporter software has been downloaded onto a computer, you will need to get the software properly registered. Registration instructions are included with the software. Once the software has been registered, the reporter software is ready to use. When using the reporter software, you must connect the Critline monitor to your computer using a custom-made DB9 to RJ45 data cable provided by Fresenius Medical Care. If your computer does not have a 9-pin communications port, you can also purchase from Fresenius Medical Care a serial to USB converter cable that will allow you to connect the data cable to your USB port. When using the reporter software, you only need to have the Critline monitor turned on. You do not have to be in any special screen and you do not have to select any specific printer. The reporter software requires that you enter a patient's name and ID prior to downloading the data. There are several other fields that can be entered, but only patient name and ID are required. Once patient name and ID have been entered, the Get Data button will highlight. Once you select Get Data, the treatment data will be downloaded to your computer. Once the data has been successfully downloaded, be sure to select Save Report. When using the reporter software, you can only have one treatment in the Critline monitor memory at a time, so you need to download the data after every treatment. If you want to open a report from a previous treatment, simply go to Open Report and select the treatment you want to review. Once open, the profiles can be printed by simply selecting the print option. 